Hello and welcome. Uh, this is Agnieszka from AGT Masterclass and today uh, with me I've got uh, my uh, dear friend and colleague uh, Dr. Christian uh, Nikolic. Uh, Christian, uh, welcome and thank you for agreeing to be interviewed. Thank you for the invitation, it's a pleasure. The reason we're meeting today, uh, also one of the reasons, is the, the recent uh, survey, uh, after uh, surveys on working conditions on audiovisual translators in Europe, this is what I wanted to talk to you uh, about today. Could you perhaps tell us um, what your goals were, uh, what you wanted to achieve uh, with this survey and uh, why uh, you actually uh, did it? Mm -hmm. So I first did the survey for the Croatian market which was a little bit uh, different uh, because I'm no longer on the board of the association but uh, in Croatia, but uh, they also needed the information, the association needed the information, uh, so the concrete numbers in order to uh, enter negotiations with uh, the Ministry of Culture and uh, other stakeholders in order to better the working conditions uh, in uh, 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 Croatia and uh, all these institutions when you approach them they need concrete information so how much you're making uh, 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 what your issues are and we didn't know that and if you remember our ABT conferences we always uh, end up uh, discussing fees and discussing uh, working conditions but we ne never actually had concrete information and then uh, after approached me after the creation survey and asked me if they if I wanted to if I would be interested in uh, working for them and conducting a Europe-wide survey uh, which I accepted, but I also accepted to do it uh, on the condition that I work with a statistician. Um, and then a colleague from the uh, psychology department actually helped me and her colleague as well. Uh, it, so it wasn't just me, uh, not at all. I was sort of uh, uh, leading the way, I hope. We launched it in June uh, 20, was it last year? I, I'm lost in time a little bit. 2022 uh, probably. 2022 yes so we launched it um, in the summer uh, and then we uh, um, so uh, the statisticians actually uh, analyzed the data I presented the raw material not understanding everything myself uh, at languages under media in Berlin and then that we analyzed a little bit more uh, and this uh, report then was uh, produced and released a couple of weeks ago yeah, so we managed to uh, gather uh, quite a few people, uh, nearly 2,000 subtitles, right, uh, from different countries. Yes, uh, the distribution per country was sort of uh, expected to a degree because uh, if you compare the number of subtitles and the number of people in in a particular country sort of corresponds to uh, the size of the country. Not necessarily, for instance, Portugal is not that big um, uh, a country, but uh, still there were quite a few responses. So it, obviously it's a large, uh, very active uh, uh, community there. Lots of people working in AVT. Thank you, Portugal, again. So let's try to... Uh actually tell uh, our viewers uh, what the results are right you can you can look it up right it's available online it's a beautiful presentation by the way with all the graphs uh, coming up when you're opening uh, but what did you actually find when you um, for instance when it comes to the differences between uh, the countries in terms of rates or working conditions mm -hmm. so we uh, i think uh, across the board, uh, you can uh, see that uh, there is this issue of precarity of the job. So uh, even in countries such as, for instance, uh, France or some, or some Scandinavian countries where workers' rights are in general better than in other countries, you have this issue of um, um, subtitles, especially most of the uh, respondents were subtitles, uh, they can't really control uh, their uh, working hours at all. They can't control the quantity of work that they get. Uh, and also they are not very often in most cases not uh, paid for the extra tasks they have um, that they are being asked uh, to do, for instance, fixing 
uh, translations once they have been finished because in the production process something uh, was found out to be wrong and then the file would need to be returned and then so a couple of hours a week devoted to that. Another thing uh, I think what struck me the most is the level of education and the level of expertise that most people have and the level of pay because uh, more almost uh, two thirds are paid uh, across the board again uh, uh, the median or below the medi me median wage of the uh, country. Uh, another thing that has become very transparent is that there is no difference between uh, beginners and experienced subtitles in how much you are paid. In any and that's given not good news, right, for professionals? That's absolutely <laughs> not good news, and that's not a good motivation uh, for uh, remaining in the in the uh, profession. Yeah, because the uh, price for the minute, right, is the same whether you're uh, inexperienced or whether you've been working for 20 years. Yes, and now in this situation, um, I don't remember this uh, levels this level of inflation since uh, I don't know 1980s when I was a kid. Uh, uh, so uh, the the price has actually dropped significantly, uh, and uh, at the same time uh, the uh, companies or so content owners haven't actually increased the pay. So essentially, you are I don't know after 30 years of uh, subtitling you're experiencing a pay cut when everybody where everybody else is getting at least in some cases symbolic uh, uh, raise in some countries it's uh, set in law that your uh, salary is indexed uh, for inflation right uh, this doesn't happen in you know, audiovisual uh, translation so the only thing which has also become transparent is that you can increase the volume of work uh, in order to make up for it. And that, that leads to a whole uh, set of other issues, such as uh, poor quality of translations uh, and also your work-life uh, balance. Um, uh, so uh, that has also be become very clear. Another thing is uh, that uh, it seems that uh, those subtitles, not it seems, it's, it's there in the data. So. Uh, those subtitles or audiovisual translation translators in general who negotiate their rates, who are members of associations, who work for more than one client, uh, have slightly better working conditions. So at least that, if you if your client base is uh, wider, which of course uh, demands uh, you, you need time, you need uh, energy uh, to do that. You also need uh, a little bit of courage. Uh, to do that, yes, you will. Uh, you will then uh, maybe have slightly better uh, uh, pay, and also it's interesting. So that, this is uh, sorry to jump in. But this is this is good news to those people who are just starting to work in the industry and may not realize that you can actually negotiate the rates, right? You can absolutely negotiate uh, the the rates. Sometimes it's. Uh, I think it's difficult if you sort of. Uh, uh, as a student uh, said yesterday, suffer in silence. Uh, so if you don't uh, communicate with your colleagues, if you're not a member of association and you think that you have to accept everything you assert, uh, then of course it's uh, quite difficult and uh, you just, uh, you're faced with a huge company that just sends you the rates and says, uh, this is it. I'm pretty convinced that if everybody said we are not working for these rates, uh, money would be found because, uh, yes, this is how uh, things work. As, uh -huh. So it's good if to you... get together essentially in an Absolutely. association or something because otherwise you haven't got any contact with other subtitles who work Absolutely. for the company. Yes, so that's also a message to um, uh, beginners union now so join your association as soon as uh, possible so may, maybe i think some associations uh, require uh, at least a year of experience but uh, as soon as you can join uh, the association and negotiate 